Hi and welcome to a new review from Class 47 Peter and today we are here with the first ever Christmas special from Class 47 Peter. Now the reason I'm calling it the first is because in the past as you'll all know I have never done a Christmas special before because I've well I've never really ever bothered to do it to be quite honest I've always overlooked doing Christmas specials you know, I have done, the closest thing I suppose you could say are videos on Boxing Day I've done. But, you know, I've never really labelled them as Christmas specials. Especially because on Christmas Day I don't really tend to film videos. I'm on Twitter on that day, of course, but mm, not really on YouTube. Well, in the case of not uploading stuff onto YouTube on that particular day. However, I thought this year I had to make the exception of doing so. Because in the past, I've nearly been on YouTube for eight years now. In, well, I will have in 2015. We are still currently in 2014. And um, But in the past six years, including this year, which is the seventh year, I've never done a... Well, actually in the seventh year, yeah, obviously I have done a Christmas special because, you know, this year in 2014 was my seventh anniversary on YouTube. In the past six years, I haven't done one. But that's all about to change today. Because I thought it's high time that I did a Christmas special. And so this Christmas special is going to be a review. Because I don't think there's any other way that's better than doing a review. I mean, you could do Santa specials recreated on your layout, perhaps, and maybe do the odd thing at the ordinary. But, in my opinion, the best Christmas special you can do is a review. And this is going to be extra special because it's not just brand new like it's brand new to me and my collection, but it's also a new release. It's only just been out in the shops. Which I didn't think it would come out this year, to be honest, but we'll get to that later. But, what makes it even more extra special is the fact that this was a, was a Christmas present. So it makes this video more extra special that I'm going to be reviewing something that I got for Christmas and just receiving this as a present it just had a big grin on my face it really did so what are we reviewing well what we are reviewing is a train pack now I don't tend to buy train packs on the regular basis I do believe the last train pack I bought and reviewed was the talisman I think I can't quite remember because it, it does seem it's been a long time since I last had a train back because my memory at times is like a sieve but this train pack that we are looking at today is not made by Hornby it's made by Batman of all people now this is the first for Batman because they have never released train packs before and only at the start of 2014 did they announce that they were going to be releasing some. They've only confirmed three so far. This is one of them. One of three. And they might make more in the future. I don't know. That will be up to Batman. But I really can't see a reason why they shouldn't make more train packs. You know, given all those years ago, they have never released a train pack until now. You know, they never thought of doing them before. But I suppose it was a matter of when really rather than if and I suppose it was only a matter of time as well before they did so like I said they've only released three um, this one and another one has been released uh, the third one is not coming out till next year but the other two they've got nothing to do with this video because they are not important this train pack is because this is the one we're looking at and this is in my opinion this one is more interesting than the other two they are bringing out and this one is more important. Now the train pack we're having a look at today needs no introduction because it says what it is in the title above or oh, down there now actually the titles um, but also you can see what it is on screen especially because of the big writing written all over the box and it is the Railway Children train pack. Now, the box is only just about fits into shot actually, because I had to clear off 
most of the workbench that I do these reviews on to get this box onto the bench. But also I've had to place the camera back away from the bench so I could get it all into shot. So it's it, you obviously can't see it, but <clears throat> behind the tripod that the camera's on, there's a couple of ladders and I'm standing right by the door. So there's not really much room to stand by, especially because I've got a bin down here. But you know, it 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 all helps to get into shot reel and to make it look more neat. <coughs> so about then I just coughed. But well, ever since this was released, since well, ever since it was first announced, should I say, at the start of 2014, as soon as I saw the artwork they drew for this. I thought to myself, I've got to get this, and I had it on my wish list. And since it was first released, I've been really hyped up about this. I've been really quite excited for it because, you know, the Railway Children. I absolutely love and adore the film. I've seen the Railway Children film loads of times, and if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. It's a brilliant film, and I recommend you see it. I've seen it a lot of a time, a lot of times, when I've been a child. It's which, coincidentally, they've played during Christmas, so they'll, they're more than likely to play it again this year. I'd be surprised if they didn't, given they've done it in the past. And I've also recently gone back and watched the film online, because there was a website that was doing that allowed you to watch these films online. And so, of course, I went and watched the Railway Children. They've done many Railway Children films. This particular one is the one from the 1970s. I wasn't born in the 70s, but they still play the film. And it's still terrific. You know, it really is a timeless classic, this is. And as well as being a timeless classic, <coughs> it's also one of them heartwarming stories as well. And it really does capture the imagination and spirit from a generation. You will know what I mean if you've seen the film, and if you haven't, and you just watch it now, then you'll also know what I mean. But anyway... So we have the Railway Children train pack, which of course is aimed towards the said film. And you've got the writing on the box, which is the correct font that they used for the DVD cover of the film. It's red on the box and white on the ends and the sides of the box. But then in fairness, given this part here of the box is white, you wouldn't really be able to see it if the font was white. And this train pack is a special collector's edition. I do believe the other two train packs are special collector's editions as well, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But this one definitely is, because it says so on the box. So, the train pack, well, what did you get in it? Well, if you look at the beautiful artwork on the box, then you get a good idea of what you're going to get. But the artwork, just look at that, I mean, that is just brilliant. I just think how long it took for just one guy to drew that. And Batman have done this with all three of the train packs that announced. You, you get artwork on the front of the box. Which is nice, because it's nice to see you get artwork of what you get in the train pack, rather than opposed to just photographs of the models of what you get in it on the box. Like with what Hornby do and what Batman do with the train sets, basically. I mean, also, apart from that, you get pictures of the models, what you get along the side of the box hit the box there. But you do get, of course, some information on what you get written along the bottom of the box there and along the, the bottom here. As you can just see the writing, if I just zoom in. You can see it's along there, along the top, on that red stripe, and then it's along there. So, what you get in the train pack? You get a Batman 5700 class pannier tank in the Great Northern and Southern Railway livery, which I should point out, for those of you that don't know, the Great Northern and Southern Railway, it's not a real company. It's featureless. And so in the film, they did have the pannier tank that features in the film. They have several different engines in the film. They have the pannier, of course, they have the Grizzly N2, the sole survivor. They have a Lancashire and Yorkshire Class 25, which also appears in the Fictuous 
Great Northern Southern Railway livery, and they have a Woodswell Clark saddle tank. In that case, it's B S C number 67. But the pannier tank is the main locomotive that you see in the film, because you do see it a lot more than the others. And the pannier does do a lot more in the film, to be honest. Especially in the scene with the landslide, where the children from the film stop the train from hitting the landslide. So you do see the pannier more in the film than the others, because the pannier is the main star in terms of locomotives in the film. But as well as the pannier in the fictitious livery, it's nice that they've done that, because it's more fitting. Because if they used like a Great Western Railway pannier in the Great Western livery, it just would not go together. So it makes sense to have it in the fictitious livery, and so that is just brilliant that they've done that. But you also get two coaches, also in the fictitious Great Northern Southern Railway livery. In this case, it's the, I do believe they call it the Maroon and Cream livery. For the type of coaches, I don't know what they are because it doesn't say. But, you don't just get a locomotive and two coaches. Nope. You also get a station building made by Batman Seamcraft, which is a model of Oakworth Station, as seen in the film, The Railway Children. In fact, of course, the locomotive and the coaches, as they all you get with a pack, are as, see, as, as you see them in the film. You know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. But Batman have took train packs to a whole new level since they've included the building. But I really do like that they've done that because it makes this train pack a bit more extra special. I mean, it's not what I'd expect in a train pack because I'd expect that in a train set. But it's nice to see they've done it in a train pack because, again, it, you know, it makes it more extra special. And for the money as well you get, it's definitely worth it. Not just for the building, but you know what I mean. This train pack is worth it for the amount of money you get. Because you get a locomotive and two coaches and a building. So that is brilliant. And that's what makes this train pack more interesting than the other two. Because it's a, it's a train pack. Ugh, sorry. That didn't quite roll off the tongue there. It's a train pack to do with the film. And, of course, you get a building with it as well. Basically. So it is more interesting. But before we go on to open it up and have a look at it, I just want to quickly say that this is not the first time anybody has made a railway children train pack for the OO scale market. Um, in the past, Triang Hornby did do a railway children train pack before they stopped making models. Now, I was under the impression that Triang and Hornby were different companies and I was under the impression that Triang went bust and then Hornby took over but I've heard stories that Hornby is well, Hornby is Triang but with a different name I mean Triang was later rebranded as Hornby but I was told that two different companies got together and were challenging each other but, you know, I've heard different stories about it, so I don't know what is exactly true. I'm only saying what I've been told, so I'm not expecting it to be right. And then I heard that Hornby went and bust and then Triang brought them over, but I really don't know, because I've heard that... I've heard several different stories, to be honest, so I don't know which is which. I don't know if Hornby's still Triang, because it's supposed to be, given Triang was later rebranded as Hornby, but then I don't know if Hornby was an actual company that went bust and then Triang took over, or vice versa. So I don't know. I've heard different stories and it's quite confusing to be honest because there's no actual answer but there you go. But Triang did do a Railway Children train pack. However, it was flawed. I've never owned a Triang Railway Children train pack and I would never own one. I would never think or plan to own one. Simply because I really don't like the Triang models. They look like, well, they're not as realistic as models you get now they're more toy-like, but also some of them look like polished plastic baby toys to be honest, and the railway children train pack they did, it was completely wrong, you know, they had the whole wrong idea, everything in it was wrong, what you get in the pack was wrong, well when I say everything was wrong, what you get in the pack was wrong, they what you get, because I've seen pictures of the train train pack they did for the railway children, what you get is an LMS GT in the fictitious Great Northern Southern Railway livery. 
In the film, there is not a single Jinty in sight. No Jinty appears in the film, let alone the fact you don't see a Jinty in the victorious livery, the Pannier War. The Pannier tank was the locomotive you see in the film, as well as the Lancashire and Yorkshire Class 25 and so on, but there was not a Jinty in the film. And you know, trying at that point they did make a Pannier tank, so why didn't they think to include the Pannier? But then again, the livery wasn't entirely accurate as well. Again, it made the model look like a polished plastic baby toy. And, you know, the style of the font and the lining and all that. It just wasn't exactly accurate. It was cheapo, basically. You know, it didn't have the quality to it. But then also, the coaching stock was wrong. You got an American passenger coach and a GWR Clestery coach, which is the wrong stock. So I really don't know what they were thinking when they thought to come up with that idea. I don't know if it was very popular, but I really can't imagine it being so, to be honest. So about that, a street sweeper has just come by. Typical, but you can't really do, you can't really do much about that, to be honest. <coughs> it's just one of them things that happen. But anyway, let's get down to what we've all been waiting for. Let's open up this train pack and see what it's like. Now, this is the first time I've opened this up, because I've not actually looked at this yet, of course. So what we have to do here is to take off the box top. It does take a while to get the top off. Any time today. There we go. So it does come off quite slowly, but there you go. It, the box lid is now off. I mean, again, the artwork, it's just brilliant, as I've said before. I always keep my boxes. I recommend you do keep them. But this particular one, yeah, definitely keeping. I mean, I do... I do keep all the other boxes to my models anyway, because you shouldn't really throw the boxes away to your models. I never do. But even if you did, this is a box that I don't even recommend you throw in the bin. Just look at it. It's just a brilliant box. <laughs> just look at the artwork and the style of the font you get, which is on even the box ends as well. You get two barcodes as well on each end of the box. I'm not sure why they've used two barcodes, but there you go. And of course again you get the railway children font on the ends of the box. And there's the owners to the film as well, their logo, Studio Canal. Can't forget them. And of course on both sides of the box you get what you get in this particular train pack. So let's put the box lid somewhere down safely so it doesn't get damaged. And the question is, where am I actually going to put it? Um, let's put it out here for the time being. Okay, and the best thing about this now, I can now move the camera forward again. And so, as you can see, now I was expecting to see everything you get in the box wrapped up in foam sheeting, but no, everything's already out there. I do believe it's all resting in cellophane sheeting, as you can just about see there, basically. But you can see everything, so it's not wrapped up. And you can see what you get. You get the pannier and the two coaches and the station building. But just look at the inside of the box. You get a nice card insert picture of pictures, or images, should I say rather, from the film. Oh, sorry, that was the box falling over. I'll just lower that down for that. I'll edit that out. And you don't normally get this, you normally just see a blank piece of polystyrene chunk, but they've actually inserted a card insert with this particular train pack. Hornby don't do that, but Batman have done it with the other train pack they released, with this one. And I do believe they're bound to do it with the third train pack that's going to come out. And so what you get, you get a picture of the children that appear in the film. As you can see there, there's a picture of the pannier there. And you've got a scene there, that's basically the Lancashire and Yorkshire Class J25. It's also in the fictionist Great Northern Southern Railway livery, as you can see. And you get another image of the pannier there, but it's slightly disfigured by that coach there, because obviously that's a cut out around that bit. But, you know, it's nice that they've done this, it makes it a bit more interesting. So it's nice to see this, to see some pictures on the 
front of the polystyrene when you first open it. However, it looks like you might have a bit of a trouble getting everything up, and especially the building, because it seems to be in some piece of plastic, but you can't seem to really get at it very well. Basically, and it does look like it's going to be harder to get the locomotive and the coaches out with this card insert here. So I wonder, maybe this card insert... Oh, yes, the card insert comes out. Which is quite clever. Okay, so the card insert does come out. Some people might think this is a bit pointless, but, you know, it, it's about the presentation in it, really, so it does add to that. Somewhat. So let's take that away. Okay, and so now, of course, you get the usual boring polystyrene junk. So, of course, now it'll be easier to get everything out of the box now. Now, here I've noticed you get some accessories of some sort, so we'll just get them out. And as you can see here, we get two bright pipes. You get one there, which is to go on the front of the loco. And you get one there to go on the back of the loco. And also you get two gangway doors for the coaches that have even got the Great Northern Southern Railway lettering on them. Now, I do know where they go on the coaches, but where they specifically go, like, well, when I mean where they specifically go, I mean, I think one of these is to go on the front coach, on the gangway that's behind the locomotive's bunker, and then I think one of these, because you do get a composite and a brake, I do believe on the brake coach one of these also goes to the back of the coach. I'm pretty certain that that is how you put them on, and where they go. But, I can't be too certain. But I wasn't expecting these, anyway. But regardless, even if I am wrong of where they specifically go, on which corridor gangways, then I'm sure someone is bound to correct me. But I'm pretty certain I'm right. But we'll put these details on later. So we'll put them to one side. So, what should we look at first? I think we'll look at the building first, to get that done out of the way. So let's just get it out. That's why I've got all these finger holes here to get it out, because it is in a big plastic case that you are keen to get with the Batman. Like the rolling stock and the, well, the locomotives as well. You also do get the usual paperwork stuff in here, which I can see, but I'm going to have to wait until last to get the polystyrene tray out to get at it. Because it doesn't seem to want to come out at the moment. Okay. So let's look at the building then. So what we have to do is, well, we all know what to do. You slide off the plastic case. There's a load of bits of polystyrene there. It doesn't really matter here, but, you know, it's irritating me somewhat. In fact, a brush. I know this is crude, me doing this, but, you know. I'm still going to do it anyway. Because, you know, all these bits of polystyrene you get, that it really does irritate me. That is one of the reasons why I'm not really keen on this packaging. But that's just me. So, we'll put that away. To one side. And now all we have to do is, well, in this case, we do this. Usually, you lift it upwards. In this case, it's sidewards. So, just lift out the building. And then we'll just, you've just closed this back up. Then put the, the package sleeve back on. To make it look neat and tidy. We don't have all the rubbish about. So now we can have a look at the building. Well, sorry about that then. The SD card got formed, so I had to go and replace it. But anyway... Well, just look at the detail on this. It's on par with the Hornby Scaldale range. Even right down to the bricks, they're just so detailed. The detail is just stunning. 
the bricks here are dirty which adds to realism and even the drain pipes and the guttering is stunningly detailed as well and just look at the detail on the roof as well is that the tiles actually look like tiles and the chimneys as well for granted you can't get smart generator units in them but if you wanted to you could get some cotton wool and stick it in the top of the chimneys so it looks like the smoke's coming out of it some might think that's a bit silly but it's actually creative doing that and um, of course you've got the glazing in the windows and just look at the detail through the hallway there just look at that I mean there's no door here but that's accurate enough but just look at the detail through there oh, had the camera in the wrong place then just look at that got a nice door there painted up and I like how the door in this part of the wall is brown and the background is cream the wall basically and they got a nice clock on the station building there with the Roman initials and that looks like a real clock but in miniature you got a letterbox there and even right down to the door handles as well I mean just look at the detail it's not something low quality basically and this detail around the roof as well I mean for granted there's not many people that do reviews of buildings Scaled Scaledale or Batman Scenecraft so this is going to probably be a YouTube first actually where somebody reviews a building of sorts you've got some more glazing on the back of course and you've got another door there I do believe these are the double doors just look at the door knobs on them and again the brickwork it's just it looks like real bricks it's like you're holding the real building but in miniature of course and you get more drain pipes and gutter in I mean it's not like railroad range quality I mean I care they don't do buildings fair enough but you know what I mean it's not basic it's not like cheapo it's quality so, you know, I mean Batman's this is the first Batman scene craft building I've had but you can just see that it is on par with the Hornby Scaldale range like the windmill over there that's Hornby Scaldale and that is and that's a stunning model but this building is just as stunning I'm sure I can find a place for it on the layout or if someone else was to get this pack they might just want to keep it on display somewhere but I think I might just be able to find a use for it on the layout which will look cool and also somebody who gets this pack might want to model a scene on a layout from the railway children and that's possible using this building you could model Oakworth station in miniature but there's the building there isn't really much to say about it I forget what material it's made from I'm sure someone will say what material this is made from because I can't remember but even so that's more than enough we can say about the building really there's not really a lot to it other than it's a stunning model so we'll just put the building to one side and so now we can have a look at the other thing so now we'll have a look at the couches okay so here's the composite we'll have a look at the brake last so I'll just take off this cellophane sheet and we'll just put that in the well we won't put it in the bin we'll just put it back in there for now so, here is the composite coach, as you can see. Now, this is not the first Batman coach I've owned, but, you know, just look at the detail. It really is stunning. Again, I forget what type of coach this is. I'm sure someone will point out what it is in the comments, but just look at the livery. I mean, it's stunning. It's accurate. It's in the... Well, you know what livery it's in. You can see you've got the... Great Northern Southern Railway letter in there, as it did in the film. I do believe they call it the Maroon and Cream livery, but I'm not 100% certain on that. But I like how the bottom is the colour it is, the maroon, if that's what it's meant to be. And then the top is the cream, 
and then you've got the lining just drawn by the doors there and alongside the windows you know it really does make the coach stand out and of course you've got metal wheels of course because you wouldn't want plastic ones and so you can add interior lighting in this if you wanted to I might not do it but then again even if I wanted to that would be something for the future but you know it's possible to do it the couplings they are now and they're actually in fact they are screwed into place as you can see on both couplings so they don't have the sockets but you know that's not really a problem you can still remove what them should you so wish you've got buffers as well of course they're not sprung but then you don't really want them to be sprung you've got some lamp irons and the detail on the gangways I mean just look at that the detail is just brilliant and of course you've got the gangways itself and these are even made of rubber look at that you know I wasn't expecting that usually they're made out of plastic but you know to have it made out of rubber that's something different and there's a fair bit of weight in this coach as well it's not massively heavy it's just about right basically and again there's the detail on the other side you get glazing in all the windows of course and there's even seats inside there as well might be a bit hard to see but there definitely are seats in there so you could add passengers in there if you wanted to again I don't know if I'm gonna do that and even if I do it's gonna be an idea for the future again you got of course the accurate livery because you wouldn't want it to have a different livery and this is a well it's a mixture basically you got third class on the this side of the coach as you can see you got the font there and even the door handles as well just look at that and it's basically a first and third class coach because you got first here as you can see written on the doors there and again you've got the nice lining that's around by the doors and the windows so it, again it stands out and then you've got these windows here which are well you can't actually see into them basically not very well these would basically be where the toilets would be because let's face it if another train pulls up when this train is in the station or if there's people on the platform as this train has pulled in you really wouldn't want to see someone on the toilet would you unless you're a peeping tom but you know what i mean so of course that is accurate for these windows to be like this so they've it's done there for privacy reasons basically that's why you can't really see into them we well, suppose even the guard would be in there well in this case he wouldn't be in there but still it's just like an example sort of thing the roof again just look at the detail it's a grey roof and although roofs can be boring to look at this one it's actually fairly decent too you've got all these bumps at the top like it's supposed to and you've got some more detail in here and you even do get a couple of metal handrails on the top there so that's quite nice and again you've got the third and first letter in there the bogey detail it's really nice it gets springs and axle boxes and rivets and even the underframe detail just look at that that's really quite good so there's the composite coach we'll just put that down to one side and now we'll have a look at the brake which is going to be pretty much identical to the composite oh the polystyrene really is quite squeaky so here's the brake coach so the only difference here is that unlike the composite which has all the passengers in it one area of the coach is for the guard and the luggage and the rest is for the passengers again you've got the same amount of weight in this coach because you wouldn't want it to be anything different again metal wheels and couplings that you can remove by taking out a screw I will take out the one at the back but I'll do that later again you've got the metal wheel so you could add interior lighting and lighting strips if you wanted again you've got bogey detail, rivets, axle boxes and springs and the underframe detail again just look at that 
that's really good. You get buffers as well. Oh, in this case, a buffer. That's quite interesting. It looks like there's a buffer missing on that one coach. Right, well, a good few minutes have gone by for me trying to look for the missing buffer off the coach. I looked, I've basically looked everywhere for it. I've looked on the floor, can't find any sign of it. I've even looked in the box, can't find any hair or sign of it. And I even looked back on the footage I'd filmed to see if, the, to see if it had been obvious if it had fallen off and it didn't seem to be the case. So what I had to do was, I went into my spares box, I found a buffer, which was a metal one, and I glued it into place using PVA and I had it painted at Revel Black. Now I used Revel Paint because it, it is better than Hornbrawl. It's to do the crystals in it, basically. And also, well, Revel Paint I find is a bit better to use than Hornbrawl. I'm not saying Hornbrawl Paint's entirely bad. But there are a few advantages over it. Um, the main reason why Revel Paint is better because it has a site to do with the crystals in it. So the paint is a bit better. Um, but also, Revel Paint does dry quicker. Basically. Well, the thing with the crystals in it, better ones in it, I don't mean crystals and in gemstones things, no. Uh, but you'll know what I mean if you use paint. But on that point, I was told by somebody outside of the internet when I went to buy paint from Hobbycraft. When I, when I was building a kit at the time. Um, but I do find that Revel Paint does dry quicker than Hornbrawl Paint. So that's why I've used Hornbrawl. The reason I've used PVA is because, well... Despite what some people say, I do find it ideal for things like this. The thing is because poly cement, I... At times it is suitable to use, but at times I don't think it's that ideal. Because, after all, this buffer was metal. And I did try poly cement on it, a very small bit, and it didn't really work. As for super glue, I haven't got any, but then I don't really like using it. Because it really is messy to work with, regardless even if you know how to use it or not. Just pointing it out. The reason why I don't like using it is because not only is it messy, but I have found in the past that I've had detail parts stuck to my finger. Because the glue dries that quick. I've even had parts stuck to the workbench. Not this particular workbench, but I have had it before. And so I've had to carefully pry them off without damaging them. And also with poly cement, even though I have stuck details on with poly cement before, some of the details do have a tendency to fall off. It's not the case with all of them, but in some of them it is. Like those really thin vacuum pipes you get on the model, the modern locomotives, like the class 56s and 50s. They're more prone to dropping off. And I use poly cement for those. Um, but PVA, it does work. It may not be ideal to some, but, you know, I find it does work. And if it works, and it works. Then there really isn't much of a problem there. But, yeah, I mean, this idea with the missing buffer, it's not good, really. Because, you know, I would have expected Batman, of all people, to have at least prevented that from happening. Or, or... Even if there was something with a missing buffer in there, like a coach or whatever, say, I'd have expected them to have at least put spares in the detail pack. But then again, I would have also expected them to have checked over their things before packing them up. But I've managed to fix it, so it's not much of a big problem, really. But even so, you know, that still shouldn't have happened anyway. But anyway, as with the composite coach, the same level of detail is on here. Like I say, you've got the couplings that you can remove via the screws. You've got the metal wheels and the same bogey detail as you got on the composite. Springs and rivets and axle boxes. And the underframe detail, it's quite superb. And again, rubber gangways, as you can see. And again, you've got roof detail in which the roof is painted on both the composite and the brake is light grey. And again you've got glazing in all the windows and seats in the coach. You probably cannot see it very well but to my eye there is definitely seats in there. And then that's obviously where the toilet would be. And then here is the guard compartment. 
as you can see back there it's got guard this is basically where well luggage and things would go basically uh, but again the livery is spot on and you've even got the lining around the doors and the windows and the third class lettering on the doors and the door handles as well just look at that and again the great northern and southern railway logos which is the accurate stole lettering on both the composite the loco and the brake and that's very nicely printed on and then at the back of the brake coach you get some windows in the back now that's a nice touch and again you can see through the windows as well which is quite nice and then on the other side it's basically the same detail uh, this is the corridor one basically so you walk down that corridor and you'll find the seats are in that side but you know what I mean, you know what I'm talking about you can just see the corridor in there you might just be able to see the seats in there as well but there are definitely in there trust me and again you've got the same amount of weight as it is in the composite but it's not too heavy because then you don't really need it to be because bear in mind this is being pulled by, lo by a locomotive okay so that's it for the brake coach I think that's more than enough we can say so I'll just pop it down there now we can move on to the locomotive okie doke right not really a fan of this polystyrene packaging but you know hmm. this could be a bit trickier to get out yeah it, this one could be hard to get out bad folks I guess the camera doesn't really like the I guess there we go it's out so I'll just put the loco down there and before we come to the locomotive properly let's just look to see what else is in the box so I'll just put that to one side because there is some paperwork in here so First of all, we have the branch line guide to model railways, as you can see. So, it's not the most amazing. Here we have the warranty service, of course, and the product and maintenance care guide. And then on the back, that's the collector club flyer if you wish to join it. But I really have no intention to do that at any point. And then there is the instructions for the locomotive of course so we'll put those to one side ready to go into my folder of instructions yeah um, it's it's nothing really amazingly interesting to be honest using the Batman era system era system mm. landscaping a layout locomotives and more so yeah it's not the most amazing piece of information you can get in there and it's not really a lot in there but still and then this, what's this? Ah, yes, look, it's a certificate of authenticity. And so this one is number 1499. I have no idea how many they are going to make. But this one is number 1499, basically. You've got the Studio Canal logo on there again. And just look at the background, you've got the nice artwork you had on the box and the railway children letter in there as you can see and you've got a bit of information there about what you get so that will go into the folder certificates I have so we'll put that to one side we'll just remove the box and we will put the coaches over that side I think so now we can look at the locomotive. Okay, so 
let's take off this cellophane wrapper. And we will put that into the polystyrene tray. I know some, most people would throw it away, but I'm not going to. It is a bit better that they've used that than the tissue paper that Hornby have used in the past. But that's just me. Okay, so I've only got this brush out again because there is. I can see some bit of dust on the model, so we will brush it off. There isn't much on here, but there is some. So it's all about care with your models. Okay. So let's have a look at the pannier. Well, first of all, let's bring the camera closer to shot. Okay, so the camera's been brought closer into position, so now we can get a look at this model properly. But wow, just look at this. I'm holding the real thing, but in model form. Wow. Where do we begin? Well, first of all, there's actually quite a bit of weight in here. It is actually heavy, but that's what we want, because without the weights you wouldn't be able to pull the two coaches you get with the train pack. So it's important you've got the weight. So that's a good start. The couplings, they are indeed removable. I do believe it's the dovetail connectors, yep. They are the dovetail couplings. I think I'll remove the coupling from the front, to be honest. Because I don't really have much intention of using the front coupling. And I know you could have it like if, if it was pulling the coaches backwards, bunker first, but for granted the pannier doesn't really do that in the film. The buffers, they are indeed sprung on both the front and the back. I have not much care for sprung buffers, but they're there, so people that like sprung buffers will be very happy about that. As you can see, those are the holes where the brake pipe goes into, and you've got some nice rivets on the buffer beam. You've got a nice chimney as well. You could add a smoke generator unit in there if you wanted to, but for granted I'm not going to. You get separately put on metal handrails down the tanks of the locomotive. They're called pannier tanks because underneath here you've got the access to under the locomotive to all the lubricating points basically, so that's why they're called panniers because of these huge side tanks on the side so you can actually get to the lubrication points underneath you've even got a small etched handrail there as you can see was that a gunshot? I think it might have been, I think someone's trying to shoot someone Ugh, I don't know what's going on there, I heard a bang Ugh. Anyway, never mind that. You've got a small handrail there at the top. As well as a small handrail there. And you've got two handrails there. Which is nice. You've got rivets on the bunker and the cab, as you can see. And there's plenty of them. Then that is the brake rod. That goes underneath the locomotive's wheels. There's even rivets on the cab steps as well. Just look at that. That's really good. And there's even rivets on the cab roof. You do get a vent on the cab, now bear in mind it doesn't open, but then to be honest it doesn't, it doesn't really need to. So we'll let that go. The livery, it's spot on. They've got the style of brown correct, which is accurate, they've got the correct shade. The lining is accurate. And the Great Northern Southern Railway lettering is also accurate. Just look at that. That is just brilliant. And just look at the little logo in the middle. And you've even got lining on the wheel arches there. And on the toolbox. There's even lining on under the running plate. And even on the steps as well. And you've also got lining around the cab and the bunker as well. Just like how it was in the film. 
which is a really nice touch. And I'm glad that they've done that. And even the gold paint around the windows is there. And the safety valve, the typical brass copper one. It's painted gold as well, and there's whistles on the back, also painted gold, like it should be. You get a nice big dome. These are the water filler caps. There's even rivets on top of the pannier tanks there. And again, there's some more handrails at the top. And there's a couple of handles there. And these, I do believe, are what they call the washout plugs. And there's even some more detail there, which is piping. There's even some rivets on the smoke box there, as you can see. And the running board, I just love the running board. It's a painted a light grey colour. Like a chocolate brown colour, basically. You've even got some piping there, as you can see, just under the tanks. If I turn it round to the front, you've got the silver boiler bands, or should I say silver smoke box door stripes there, as you can see. And these smoke box door handles or smoke box door darts, whichever you prefer to call them. And they're painted silver, which is accurate, just like how it was in the film. Because if you've seen the film, you will know that the pannier that appears in the film does have the smoke box door darts or handles, whichever you prefer to call them again, are painted silver. And so are the stripes on the smoke box door or bands, whichever you want to call them again. There's different names for them. The smoke box door does not open, but then it doesn't really need to. One quick thing, though, with the silver parts painted, when they originally first showed the decorated samples on the Batman website, the pannier didn't have these, so I'm glad that Batman have re-rectified that just before release. So, well done, Batman. Thumbs up. Again, you've got some rivets down there, just under the tanks. Again, more lining. There's plenty where that came from. And the red wheels as well on both sides, we can't forget the wheels they're painted a lovely red like it, again it was in the film you get pipe work down there and again another bright rod the side rods, it's accurate you just can't wait to see them move and you can actually see underneath the, the tank as well, just look at that and oh there's a bit of dust in there just take care of that again accurate livery and aligning applic application and the accurate Southern G Great Northern Southern Railway lettering logos. And I do love the embossed on them on both sides. Just looks stunning. You know, the way they print things nowadays, it's just amazing. And then you can see there is some cab detail in there painted. That is the lever. And the rest of it you can't really see much, but it is there. There's even lining on the cab door. And again, you get more separately put on metal handrails. Especially the one that goes around the front of the smoke box door. And you get these little step things, which basically the crew climb onto to get to the top of the tanks. Which, of course, you also do get on the one side of the bunker. Just there. So that's for the crew to climb up onto the coal bunker. For the coal bunker itself, now the coal is not removable, but then they don't really do this very often with tank engines. But you can still put a coal load in there if you wanted to. You've got the guardines on the back of the windows, and the back of the cab is painted black. Like how it was in the film. You get some more handrails on the back of the bunker, as you can see. And separately put on a metal. There's rivets on the bunker. You also get lamp irons on the back too and some plenty of rivets and a little coupling hook for the chain link to go on if you wanted and you even get these little hooks as well and these are to put the fire irons on which you do get on some panniers now I will not do it on this model but I have done it with my other one which I'm not going to get out but I have done it with my other pannier tank so I do have another 5700 pannier that one is in BR black with the early emblem Wow, what a great model. You know, I'm lost for words now. I don't know what to say about it. I mean, just look at the detail, it's superb.
So for the money you get a pannier, a brake coach, oh that was rolling away then, just prevented that from happening, a composite coach of course, and of course you get the building. So for the money, it's definitely worth it, because look at what you get. So, all that's left to do really is to put the locomotive and the two coaches on the track to see how it runs. I'll just quickly point out that this pannier will not pull anything else than the two coaches it came with in the train pack. Because that way I can permanently recreate the train from the classic movie The Railway Children. And it will also be like that these two coaches are its own coaches. So yeah, this will not put anything else on the two coaches it came with. Because that way, like I said, it recreates the train from the railway children superbly. And permanently as well. But wow. What a model. So... Now let's put it on the tracks and see how she runs. Okay, so here we are at the layout. And so you know what we're going to do now. We're going to get the models onto the track. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> that's not the panny and the couches, that's the building. <laughs> okay, well, silliness aside, let's be a little bit more serious about it. Because what we need to get on the track is the pannier. Do excuse the train in the background if you can hear it, that is. Okay, so first we'll get the pannier onto the track. And you may also notice that the mineral wagons I have separated them and put them in those two sidings there so you can actually see more clearly the lower car and the coaches. So we're going to put the pannier on first, and I have added the brake pipes on the model. I've added the one at the front, as you can see there. I don't know if that's on right, but I, th I think it's correct, that one. And I've added the one at the back. Um, of course, I have put the correct ones on. I just don't know with the front one if that's in the correct position like that. But I'm pretty certain it is. So the panning is on. It's quite easy given it's an 060. In fact, this is a good time to test the model out. So I'll just turn the power on and give it a wiggle. Oh yes, look at that. Smooth running. Okay, so now we can get the couches on. So we're going to get the composite on first. I mean, it does show in the photo on the side of the box that the bright couch goes beyond the pannier, but Realistically, it's the composite that goes behind the locomotive, not the other way around. And um, you will also notice that I have added these corridor gangway doors on the gangways, and I didn't need any glue. Given that the gangways themselves are made of rubber, all I had to do was just slot the gangway doors into place. So no glue was required. Um, I probably should be using the railer for this, but I cannot find it. I seem to have misplaced it and forgot where I put it. Okay, so anyway, so there's the composite couch on, and it's coupled up, as I've made sure of that. So now we're going to put on the brake couch, which I have removed the rear coupling on the back. And, as you can see, I've also added the gangway door on the end of the gangway on the brake couch. I have yet to remove the front coupling from the pannier, but I will do that in time. But I haven't done it yet. Because I wanted to put on the loco on the couches. Oh, the back bogey then wasn't actually on. But it is now. Okay, so it's all coupled up. Now just look at that. If we just back it up a bit. 
see, just look at that. That just looks stunning. Okay, so let's get the pannier and the two, and the two coaches going. Well, like I said earlier, this is really smooth performance. There's no jerky movements or grinding noises. Bear in mind, this is not the fastest speed to run on Alcoas, but we'll get her running a bit faster in a bit. But for now, we're wanting a nice slow speed. Besides, at least the passengers can look at the scenery. As you can see, there's the side rods moving. Already, she's recreating the train from the railway children. I've just got the music from the movie playing in my head now. And it's already capturing the, Im the imagination already. So there she goes over the level crossing and through the tunnel. That level crossing will have some gates on eventually. So she's going to appear from the other portal. Or end. There she goes, passing the mineral wagons. Passing by the signal box. And to the station where all the commuters are waiting to get on the train because it's late. Although, you might have to get the replacement bus service out. Ignore the building there. That is not going to be there permanently, of course, but I've just put it there for the time being. And then passing the seaside where the passengers are waving to all the invisible people. Uh, but there will be some people on it, trust me. Do excuse the PVA under the walls there, I've just glued them back into place because they came off. And then she's passing the engine shed and alongside the road. And then over the points and past the airfield, we've got the Lockheed Nighthawk and the P-47 DNM Thunderbolts. These cars are not going to be here permanently, they're just out of the way for when we can finally get these working lights to work as soon as we wind them up. And that one over there, it's either that one or that one, I can't remember which one, but it's bulbs gone out, so we've got to fix that as well. Which will be done, don't worry. And then she's back round the other end. Wow, what a train pack. Now let's get some close up shots.
So what's left to say about this train pack? Well, it's just simply brilliant. This train pack, it's the perfect Christmas gift. Or even a birthday gift, or for any time of the year as a matter of fact. And if you've had one of these for Christmas, like I have, or you're planning on getting one after Christmas, then you will not be disappointed. Because this train pack will delight all generations, new and old. And it also captures the inspiration and imagination of this film perfectly. And also, for the money, it's definitely worth it as well. You know, with this train pack, you get a locomotive, two coaches, and a building, all as they appeared in the film. I think we've got Batman to thank, because we are very lucky to have something like this on the market. It's just a gem, and it's simply amazing. It's perfect. I really can't fault it. Well done, Batman, if you're watching. You own yourself to a winner here. This train pack is highly recommended by me. Merry Christmas.